And if you would stand your feet as we worship this morning. Stop our God. He's above it all this morning. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord? Stop the Lord Almighty. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord? Our God is the Lion. The our God this morning. Yes, amen. Scripture says, book of Psalm chapter 29, it says, ascribe to the Lord, glory to his name, worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. We worship him because he's worthy, because he's holy. Just ascribe, we give to him the glory. Let's do him this morning, amen. Let just be the song of our life this morning. For creation, 
just cry out to you and you alone belongs the glory of God. God, you're worthy, you're holy, God, you're with us, God, we just thank you for that. Lord, we worship, 
this morning as we continue to worship through the teaching, through the understanding of your word, God, both through fellowship, God, just may every breath that we breathe, every word that we say this morning bring you glory and honor. It's you alone, Lord. We just pray and ask this in the mighty name of Jesus. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. I'm not tall enough to use this. <laughs> Thank you, Adam. Anyway, welcome. <laughs> We're so glad you're here. If it is your first time, uh, we just want to encourage you to stop by the info booth and grab a free gift and a token. You can use at Mocha's, so be sure. We just really want to get your information and make sure that you stay up to date on everything that is going on here at New Hope. Because we have a really great newsletter that goes out weekly. So be sure and stop by there. Also, it's OCC week. It is packing week. No, it's collection week. And we're packing lots of boxes. Okay, so this is collection week coming in all the way through next Monday, after next Sunday. And we have an upcoming event called a family packing party or an OCC packing party. If you're not, we haven't done this before as a church, so if you're unsure what that is, um, basically we're going to have tons of stuff that's been collected over the last year, especially over the last few weeks, um, and lots of boxes, and we want you to just come and pack them. So everything's basically there. You can come bring your kids or um, just bring your neighbor, grab a box. Uh, we'll kind of walk you through how that's going to look, and we just hope to pack a bunch of boxes to add on because that's more kids that are going to hear the gospel, right? And we all know, or in case you don't know, OCC is super special because they work in these places. We take boxes. We're not just dropping them and leaving. They work through the local churches so that they're distributed to the community through the local church um, to build. They already have some rapport with them. Of course, all the kids have the option of getting uh, a, 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 a What's it called? A Bible study. They can go and hear about the gospel, learn what that means, and take that into their home. So it's just a great way for us to be a part of spreading the gospel all corners of the earth. So if you've already packed a box, bring it in through next Sunday. You could bring it to the packing party um, and pack an extra box or just come. We have dinner provided that night, so uh, anytime between 5 and 8.30, just stop by. Bring your box or pack it or bring it next Sunday, and then we'll dedicate next Sunday. And it's almost all over, which is crazy. So OCC packing party this Friday the 18th. Um, also, Relationships 101 is next Saturday the 19th. Okay, this is an all-day. It's 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. right here at New Hope. $10. A couple lunches provided. Um, Pastor Chris is going to be in charge of that, and it's going to be great. So we encourage you to come if you have next Saturday. Be sure and register. Newhope on 395.com slash get connected. Um, or you can stop by the info booth. And last but not least... Looking ahead at January 2023, high school winter camp is just around the corner. So January 13th to the 16th, um, it's $150 per student. Of course, you can look at more info online on our website as well as register your kids or talk to Pastor Rich. It's going to be a good time. And can you go ahead and release or are you going to take a minute? We're going to, uh, we're going to take a minute. And, okay. Uh, yeah. So it's weird talking. <laughs> All right. Okay. All right. Tell Trista thank you. She always does a great job. Now, lots of things going on, lots of great things. And uh, I do hope you'll think about signing up for Relationships 101. It is just a great, great opportunity to learn a little bit. Uh, so some basics about uh, just some things that you can do to really enhance your relationship, especially in your marriage, which is, right, the apex of human relationship. But it definitely applies to, to any relationship. So be sure to sign up for that. And uh, we just love to... To have you there. Well, this uh, this past Friday was, of course, Veterans Day, and I don't think there really is anyone on the planet that should be more grateful for what our vets have done for us than followers of Jesus. Amen. Yeah, and so because we we experience this great freedom to uh, worship openly and and freely and. Uh, we need to just value that freedom, and that freedom comes at a price, and uh, uh, many of our vets have, have paid that price. And so this morning, we just want to honor you. If you've served in one of our armed forces, uh, would you please just stand for a moment this morning? If you've served in the Navy, the, the, uh, the Air Force, uh, the uh, Marines, um, who am I missing? Oh, man. 
Coast Guard. Did I get everybody? Army. Did I say Army? All right. You know. <laughs> yes, tell them thank you. <laughs> And stay standing just for a minute, guys. We are so grateful for your service and the sacrifice that you made on our behalf. And uh, we want to take just a moment and uh, pray God's blessing over you. So will you join me as we pray? Father, this morning we are, Father, grateful for most of all your presence that is here with us. Uh, Father, the, the fact that we can gather in this room openly and freely and declare our love for you without fear uh, of repercussions or, or retaliation. Father, we love that. And we know that that, that freedom came uh, at a price. And so for all of these who have served uh, faithfully, uh, Father, protecting our country, protecting our rights, God, we say thank you for them this morning. God, we pray your blessing over them and over their families. God, may they know how grateful we are today for uh, the service uh, that they have provided to us and to our country. God, thank you. And we pray all of that in your son Jesus' name. All God's people said, amen. One more time, will you just give them a round of applause? Thank you. Now, will you all stand with me? Let's join them. Let's stand together. All right? Look around. Find somebody you do not know and introduce yourself. Tell them welcome. You can grab another cup of coffee if you want. We'll be back here in about five minutes. Junior hires, you are dismissed to your class. Junior high. Yeah, I'm talking about right here. And then, and then you skipped it and went. I just assumed it didn't get unmuted.
Yeah, that one just popped up. We're, we're good. Yeah, we recycled the power, so. Tried to start, so. All right. You what? Okay. All right. Great to be here this morning. It's great to see your beautiful faces. Got a chance to go to a wedding yesterday. That was a ton of fun up in Natchez. I've never been to Natchez. Man, it's beautiful up there. It's been a long time since I've been up that direction, so just good to be here this morning, good to see all of you, good to be together, and uh, just good to spend some time worshiping, spend some time in God's Word. Let's pray. Father, thank you for uh, the beauty of the day, God, for the, uh, the crisp air, Father, the change in seasons, all of it a testimony to your goodness. God, this morning we just celebrate you. Father, most of all, we ask that as you are present in this room, Father, as you are present in us, that, God, you would just teach us this morning, change our hearts a little bit, make us a little bit more like your son, Jesus. Father, we want to know you. Father, we want to experience your goodness and your faithfulness. God, just give us the eyes to see those things. And, and again, God, we just pray that you would soften our hearts towards you today and that, Lord, you would just take those soft hearts and, and mold them as you would. Father, we pray all that in your son Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. All right. Well, uh, we're going to start this morning uh, just kind of a, a quick two-week series. Uh, and uh, this is uh, something that we normally do kind of after Celebration Sunday. Uh, again, we are just uh, really excited 
uh, after Celebration Sunday, uh, we have a new budget. We have a, another new pastor on staff, Raphael, and that's super cool. He was nesting in his new office this week, so uh, it was just kind of fun. Uh, but uh, he's just going to be such a great addition to our staff. And so we're excited about that. And usually one of the things that we do coming out of Celebration Sunday is we just talk a little bit about uh, kind of the future, what we kind of see on the horizon for this next year. Uh, and so one of the things that I want to talk to you about is something that we've been talking about as a staff over this, this last year. And it's something that we kind of call a discipleship pathway, okay? A pathway to becoming more like Jesus. After all, that's our goal as followers of Jesus. Amen? To become more like Him. And becoming like Jesus doesn't happen by accident, but rather when we intentionally build relationships with people that lead us towards Jesus, when we intentionally incorporate spiritual habits into our, our lives, when we place ourselves on a pathway that leads towards Jesus, we experience change and growth and our lives begin to bear the fruit of a growing relationship with Him. All right, so before we move on a little bit though, I got a couple jokes for you this morning. You ready? Okay. So uh, uh, one day this, uh, this woman, uh, she's watching TV and suddenly uh, this news bulletin flashes up on the television warning drivers to stay off of Highway 80 because some, some person is driving the wrong way on the freeway. And so frantically, she calls her husband, who she knows is traveling probably somewhere on Highway 80. She calls him up on a cell phone. She says, honey, be careful. The news just said there's some crazy man driving the wrong direction on Highway 80. And her husband responds, you have no idea how bad it is. Everybody's driving the wrong direction on Highway 80. <laughs> Glad you thought that was as funny as I did. <laughs> One of the things we often associate with aging, right, is a loss of hearing. And uh, unfortunately, just part of the deal that comes with, with uh, growing a little bit older. And so this couple, uh, they, they have this ongoing argument about the, the wife's loss of hearing. And the husband is just, he's, he's convinced that his wife is losing her hearing. And she says, no, I'm not losing my hearing. My hearing is fine. So he says one day, I'm going to prove to my wife that she is losing her hearing. And so the wife is, as she's down in the kitchen preparing dinner, the husband goes upstairs up into the bedroom and he yells from the bedroom, honey, what's for dinner? And he waits and there's no response. And so he goes to the bedroom door and he yells at his wife, honey, what's for dinner? And he waits. No response. So he goes a little ways down the stairs and he yells, Honey, what's for dinner? Still no response. He goes to the doorway of the kitchen and he yells, Honey, what's for dinner? No response. So he gets up right behind her and he says, Honey, what's for dinner? The wife turns around and she says, For the hundredth time, chicken! That would be my household, actually. <laughs> right? We, we, another thing we, we often associate with aging, right, is uh, increased wisdom. Uh, you know, the old martial arts movies where the white-haired master teaches his young, you know, undisciplined, unlearned students. Obi-Wan Kenobi, right, teaching a, a young Luke Skywalker. It's kind of a theme that we see often uh, in, in the movies. But we, but we know that, uh, unfortunately, gray hair <laughs> is not a guarantee of wisdom or maturity. Because real growth is an intentional act. Real growth and real maturity happens intentionally. The act of developing wisdom and, matur and maturity doesn't happen on accident. It happens through intentionality. Right, if you plant two trees side by side and, and one of them you kind of leave to fend but for itself and, and the other you, you water and you fertilize and, and you prune when needed, which tree 
will experience growth? Well, obviously, the one that, that was paid attention to. Right? This is the first thing that I want you to know about becoming like Jesus, right, is that healthy things grow. Healthy things grow. And this is true for every living thing, whether we're talking about plants or animals or people. Healthy things grow. And for people, we know this is true, whether we're talking about physical growth or emotional growth, intellectual growth, and especially, I believe, spiritual growth. I know many, many people who have known Jesus for a long, long time, but have not grown spiritually. They may have gray hair, they may have served as a, as a church leader, they taught Sunday school, whatever, but they have never really grown in their wisdom and maturity spiritually. Their connection with our Heavenly Father has not deepened or increased in intimacy, and the result of their immaturity is seen in a lack of fruit in their lives. We see the result of that lack of maturity, we see that come through as a, as a lack of fruit. Look what Jesus says about fruit in Luke chapter 6. He says, a good tree doesn't produce bad fruit. On the other hand, a bad tree doesn't produce good fruit. For each tree is known by its own fruit. Figs aren't gathered from thorn bushes or grapes picked from a bramble bush. A good person produces good out of the good stored up in his heart. An evil person produces evil out of the evil stored up in his heart. For his mouth speaks from the overflow of the heart. You know that a fruit tree is healthy when it's producing lots of good fruit, right? The fruit is a result or a consequence of a healthy tree. And when a tree is healthy and, and growing, it produces good fruit. The Apostle Paul in Galatians chapter 5 highlights some of what that fruit is. It's not an exhaustive list, but this is some of the fruit that comes out of the life of someone who has a growing and deepening uh, relationship with Jesus. Paul says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. The law is not against such things. Now those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also keep in step with the Spirit. And as we keep in step with the Spirit, right, this is the fruit that shows up in our lives. But there's a problem with fruit, right? One of the reasons I believe we have a lack of maturity in the church is that we've made the fruit our goal and not a result, right? We've made the, the fruit of our lives, we've made that the goal and not looked at it as a result of our relationship with Jesus. We've said good Christians, right, they look like this. They do this, they, they talk like this, all right? They, they, this is what a good Christian looks like. And we, we've developed kind of this checklist, all right, of what a good Christian looks like. And this is often our, our measuring stick, right? What is the result when you make fruit the goal and not a result? It's hypocrisy. You see, hypocrisy is, is the outcome. We walk into church on Sunday morning, and we, we know that maybe all week, all right, uh, we haven't been terribly faithful. We've struggled with patience. We haven't been particularly good. Self-control has been in short supply, okay? So we walk into church on Sunday morning, and what do we do, all right? We pretend. We pretend. We put on, a, put on a mask and pretend everything's good. Nothing to see here. Yep, I'm just your average joy-filled, peace-living, good Christian, all right? That's what we, that's what we portray. 
but just don't look too close, please. You might see the cracks in the facade. We get really good at hiding our struggles. We learn to bury our sin from view so nobody else sees it. We live lives that are full of shame and fear and hypocrisy. And this becomes our modus operandi, right? This becomes kind of our default mode of operation. And the longer we operate this way, the bigger the chasm between what we say we believe and the reality of how we live our lives. We have this apricot tree in our backyard, and uh, we've lived in this house for almost 20 years now. I love this tree. It's an old, old apricot tree, and it's huge. I try to keep it pruned, but it just keeps growing. I don't know what the deal is with that. All right, and it, it blooms in the spring. Oh, beautiful, beautiful blooms. And uh, then the fruit shows up, and this tree just, man, it is packed full of fruit. But as you get a little closer inspection of the tree, and you start to look at the fruit, it's got this fungus <laughs> on the fruit, and you open it up, it's full of bugs, right? And I know if we sprayed it, right, it would be different, right? If we paid a little attention to it, if we took care of it a little bit better, the fruit would probably be a little bit better. But see, you can have a seemingly healthy tree that has fruit on it, but upon close inspection, the fruit is kind of nasty. Why do you think so many people are deconstructing their faith these days? It's a common thing. Because this kind of Christianity is really a lie. It's not hope-filled. It's not the empowered life that Scripture talks about that we, that we read about in the Bible. And keeping up the facade, it is exhausting. See, when fruit is the goal, hypocrisy is the result. But when relationship is the goal, fruit is the result. When relationship is the goal, fruit is the result. Good fruit is the result. Fruit is the result of a growing, increasingly intimate relationship with your Heavenly Father. What does God want more than anything else from you? What is the one thing that God wants? He wants you. He wants you. He wants your heart. He wants to know you. He wants you to know Him. He wants you to experience His goodness and His character. The result then of your relationship with God is fruit. The goal is not to look a certain way or act a certain way or complete a checklist of things a good Christian does. The goal is relationship. In Matthew chapter 15, uh, Jesus is approached by a group of religious leaders, and they're upset with Jesus, of course, because his disciples weren't following the rules. They weren't following the checklist. They weren't washing their hands properly before they ate. And so these religious leaders, these Pharisees and Sadducees, came and questioned Jesus about this and were kind of harassing him about this. And this is Jesus' response to them. He said, hypocrites, <laughs> Isaiah prophesied correctly about you when he said, this people honors me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. They worship me in vain, teaching as doctrines human commands. They, they developed this list, uh, uh, this, this checklist of things that they expected you to do. All right, God said, I don't care about that. What I really want is your heart. I want you. But they didn't get that. The religious leaders of Jesus' day were more concerned about these do's and don'ts than they were concerned about the one thing that God truly wants. Again, Jesus, a little bit later, is confronted by the religious leaders, and they ask him, all right, thinking they're going to trick him into giving some uh, wrong answer. They ask him, what is the greatest commandment? All right, all, of all of these lists of, of do's and don'ts, which one is the most important? In Matthew 22, Jesus responds. It says, he said to them, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, 
and with all your mind. This is the greatest and most important command. The second is like it, love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and prophets depend on those two commands. The greatest thing that we can do is to love God with all of our heart, all of our soul, and all of our mind. And when we do that, when we have this growing, deepening relationship with our Heavenly Father, then something happens. Something happens in us. We begin to change, and we begin to grow. But if all we're doing is, is, is pursuing this list of do's and don'ts, that just leads to heartache and hypocrisy and frustration. And so because we know that growing in our relationship with Jesus, right, uh, it is the most important thing that we do. We also realize, right, that, that growth and growing in your relationship with Jesus, it isn't this really sanitized linear process, right? Growth is, tends to be kind of messy. Uh, it, it tends to, to be, you know, three steps forward, two steps back, full of failures and frustration. But the idea is that we're moving towards Jesus, that we're deepening and growing in that relationship with him so that we can produce fruit in our lives. And so uh, we, we've kind of come up with something that it's, it, does, it kind of looks like a linear process, but, but this is just to kind of give us a direction, right? To kind of get you pointed in the right direction, right? If we know that uh, we need to head north, right? This is kind of a map that kind of takes you north. Uh, and so we're calling it 3D discipleship, all right? And uh, hopefully you have this uh, in your bulletin. You got one of those. If you didn't get one uh, and you want one because uh, you want to pin it on your wall, you know, and st- st- no, you probably won't want to do that. But if you do want one, they are available out there at the, uh, the information booth. But, but hopefully you grabbed one of these as you came in. And this is, this is what we're calling 3D discipleship. It's just a framework to point you in the, the right direction. All right, and it begins by exploring this idea of, of what is a disciple. The Bible calls someone who follows Jesus and it adheres to his teaching. The Bible calls that person a disciple. In John chapter 13, Jesus says to his disciples, I give you a new command, love one another just as I have loved you. You are also to love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. The fruit of someone who has a relationship with Jesus is love, and Jesus calls those who are committed to this loving way of life and to his teachings, he calls them his disciples. So the word disciple literally means follower. All right, literally means follower. It wasn't a word that was necessarily unique to the New Testament. Right? But, but someone who was a follower of a particular teaching, somebody who was committed to, to a, a particular teacher would have been called a disciple. Look what it says about Jesus' final moments with his followers before he ascends to heaven in Matthew chapter 28. It says that Jesus came near and said to them, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe everything I've commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the very end of the age. And that is why, because of of that statement and, and other places where Jesus talks about who we are to be and what we are to do as a church, our purpose statement at New Hope reads this way. It says that New Hope exists to know God, right, relationship primarily, and to glorify him by making disciples of Jesus Christ. And so as we looked at the Bible and and, and its description of a disciple and what a disciple is, we asked ourselves, right, if our job as a church is to make disciples, what does the life of someone who's growing in the relationship with Jesus and following him, what does that look like? Right? And we see some, some specific characteristics 
of someone who is a disciple of Jesus. And so this is kind of our working definition of what a disciple is. And you'll see it right there on the card. It's kind of that middle section. Uh, and it says this, a disciple is someone who is being formed by Jesus, following Jesus' way of life, and living out Jesus' mission to make disciples. Right? Someone who's being formed and changed by Jesus, somebody who's following his example, and someone who's participating in the mission that he gave us to make other disciples. And so the three parts of discipleship in this little card, right, in this little statement, uh, are represented by these three words, discover, develop, and deploy, right? 3D discipleship. You see what we did there? That's right. Pretty tricky, huh? <laughs> All right. Three words, discover, develop, and deploy. So we kind of divided this up into, 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 into three sections, All right? Discipleship begins with discovering, right? It begins by discovering life through an authentic connection to God and his family. So this process of becoming like Jesus, right? It begins by discovering, right, a connection or a relationship to God and to his family. It begins with a relationship. So what does that look like? So at the little bottom of the card, and so these are just some kind of general examples. Okay, again, we're kind of wanting to point you in the north direction, or in the right direction, right? If we're headed north, we want to kind of point you north. So number one, we said, what does is, what is discovering look like? Well, it means attend, attending and engaging with our weekend services, right? What we do here on Sunday morning, I've always felt like, is, is our most important front door. It is, it is maybe the most important opportunity that people will have to, to kind of get an introduction to, to the church and to Jesus. Okay? Maybe this is how you got connected to New Hope. Maybe you have a friend who's searching for something to fill the emptiness in their lives, and this is a great first step. Invite them to hang out on a Sunday morning, introduce them to other followers of Jesus, and help them begin to build relationship. Number two, find a new identity in a relationship with Christ. Find a brand new identity in a relationship with Christ. John chapter 1 verse 12 says, But to all who did receive him, he gave them the right to be children of God. All right. To those who received Jesus, to those who began a relationship with him, he gave the right to be called the children of God. They have a brand new identity. They are sons and daughters of the creator of the universe. So maybe this is where you're at this morning. Maybe you've been coming to New Hope and you see your need for a relationship with God. I would encourage you, right, to give your life to Christ this morning. Begin a relationship with him, with the one who loves you. The God who wants to forgive you, restore you, make you new, and give you a brand new identity. Right? This is really the most, I think, important step in this whole process. We could throw the rest of this away, and I would say this is the most important thing, to begin a relationship with Jesus. I'm going to talk a little bit more about that in just a few minutes. Number three, take the step of baptism. Right? This might be a third step. If you've received Jesus, if you began a relationship with him, you've acknowledged your sin and your need for Jesus to forgive you, if you believed in your heart that Jesus is God's son, confessed with your mouth that God raised him from the dead, then you should be baptized. What are you waiting for? All right? What are you waiting for? In Acts chapter 2, Peter gives his first ever sermon all right? after Jesus has ascended to heaven. He sent the Holy Spirit to empower the disciples. And so Peter gets up and he begins to preach and he begins to talk about Jesus, about what happened to him, about how God raised him from the dead. And many of the men of Jerusalem gathered to hear Peter. And in Acts 2, starting in verse 37, it says, when they heard this, they were pierced to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, brothers, what should we do? Like, how do we respond to this? 
Peter replied, repent and be baptized, each of you in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. In the early church, belief and baptism were a single step, all right? You, you didn't believe and then years later decide, well, I think I'm ready to get baptized now, all right? It, it, it was one thing. When you believed, you were baptized. Baptism says to everyone, I have a new identity. I'm now a child of God. The death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus, they were for me, and I'm identifying myself with Jesus. If you haven't, if you haven't been baptized, what are you waiting for? All right. Next Sunday, we're doing baptisms. Come talk to me. Talk to Pastor Rich. We would love to baptize you. Number four in this process of, of uh, becoming like Jesus uh, is become a part of, New Hope, of the New Hope family through membership. Now, this is kind of a, a tricky one, <laughs> all right? So we talk about membership. Why is membership important for us? Why is it even in this process? As I've talked to a lot of people about membership, I, I frequently have heard this, all right, that... Uh, Membership, church membership, it isn't in the Bible. <laughs> if I'm a follower of Jesus, I'm already a member of his church. Why do I need to join New Hope? I agree. You're 100% correct. Church membership, you won't find it in Scripture. Right? And if you, are, if you know Jesus, you, you are correct. You are already a part of his family. You are a part of the church. But we, membership is important to us here at New Hope because we see New Hope as a family. And what we want to do is take our relationship with you kind of to the next level. And I think I've kind of given this illustration before, but let's say you have a boyfriend or a girlfriend and you hang out with that person, right? You really enjoy being with them. Maybe you would say you're in love, okay? And I'm not saying this is a good idea. Matter of fact, I think this is a really bad idea. But maybe you decide to move in together. All right? But here's the thing. Until you take the step, the next step in that relationship, which is what? Putting a ring on that finger and vowing before God and a room full of witnesses that you love each other until death do you part. Until you take that step, you're just boyfriend and girlfriend. All right? Marriage is that relational step that says, I am committed to you. And for us, that's kind of the picture of membership at New Hope. All right? It is the pastors and elders and leaders of New Hope saying, when you become a member, we are fully committed to you. All right? And it is you saying to, to New Hope that I am fully committed to you and I will support everything that, that New Hope is, is involved in, I will support the ministry that is happening here at New Hope. I am committed to you. So if you're interested in membership, our next membership class is coming up uh, December 11th. Um, if you go to newhope on 395.com slash get connected and you click on connect with us, there's a little card there and you can check the box that says I'm interested in membership. We'll touch base with you. Uh, I think that there's, is there a little card on the back of your bulletin that you can uh, tear off and one of the options uh, it also is I'm interested in membership. And, and we would love to just connect with you on that level. So maybe, maybe you've connected with Christ, you've connected with the church, but ultimately, what is most important to us is that we want to see those relationships grow, especially your relationship with Jesus, so that you'll begin to experience the fruit of that relationship. And so next week, I'm going to talk about the other two Ds in 3D discipleship, all right? De develop and deploy, and kind of what that looks like in the life of a disciple. Again, these are just kind of, uh, we, we want to point you in the right direction direction. And so we believe that it, it starts by getting connected in some relationships and primarily your relationship 
with Christ. And so I want to circle back to that right, real quick as we, as we kind of wrap up this morning. If you've never started a relationship with Jesus, I want to, I want to give you that opportunity this morning. You know, I found, I found a new identity in Christ when I was a junior high kid. Uh, someone told me that the, the Bible says that our sin separates us from God. And because of our sin, we deserve to spend eternity in hell, separated from the God who loves us. But because of the love that God has for us, he sent his one and only son to pay the price for our sin and die in our place. John 3, 16, right? The verse that so many of us have memorized. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him would not perish but have everlasting life. Romans 10, 9 says, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. When I was a, just a junior high kid, somebody led me in this really simple prayer. I know that I wanted, to, that, that, that I wanted this, all right? I knew that I had sin in my life. I didn't want to be separated from God. I knew, I didn't understand really what it meant to have a relationship with him, but this was kind of the first step in building that relationship. And so uh, the, 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 the person that was telling me this, he said, do you want to pray? And he led me in this really simple prayer. And I kind of expressed my heart to God through this prayer. And it's not a, it's not a prayer that saves you. There's no magic words. God knows your heart. But, but I prayed this really simple prayer. And if you've never started a relationship with Jesus, then I, I just encourage you to pray this prayer with me this morning. Just quietly between you and the Lord. All right, pray this prayer if you have never started a relationship with Jesus and you want to do that this morning. I'm going to ask you all to bow your heads right where you're at. And if you've never prayed this before, will you just, will you give your, will you give your heart and your life to him this morning by praying this prayer? This is the prayer that I prayed. God, I know that I've sinned. I know that my sin separates me from you. But God, I know that you love me. You love me so much that you sent your son, Jesus, to die for my sin. God, today I receive your free gift of forgiveness because of what Jesus did for me on the cross. God, thank you for loving me. God, thank you for saving me. I give my heart and I give my life to you. Amen. If you prayed that prayer this morning, in just a minute we're gonna, uh, we're gonna kind of all head our way. But I, I hope this morning that you would come and maybe just have a conversation with me uh, at the end of this service, all right? takes a little courage, I know. <laughs> it can be a little intimidating, but I, I would just love to pray for you. Uh, I've got, I'd love to give you a Bible, just some things to kind of get you started heading the right direction. So I would just love to pray with you and talk with you. And so if you prayed that prayer for the first time today, please come see me, and uh, I would just love to chat with you. Let's pray one more time, and then we'll head out. Father, again, thank you for this morning. God, thank you for, for showing us what it means to, to love you and to follow you. God, thank you that you are concerned about my heart. God, thank you that you're concerned about the fruit that comes out of my life. Father, I want to be faithful to you. God, I, I want to bear good fruit. God, continue to, to show us. God, continue to teach us what that looks like as we pursue you and learn to love you more. We pray that all in your son Jesus' name. All God's people said, amen. Well, thanks for being here this morning. Stay warm. Hope you have a great week. We'll see you next week.